<laughs> no. Many people say that Alzheimer's is a terrible disease, that their parent, their spouse, whoever, just disappears before their very eyes. But no one takes into account what the Alzheimer's victim feels. To be able to forget everything and just to rest in your base state of beingness. I understand that for Alzheimer's patients, there's a period early on where they worry because they can't recall words or names or why they're in a specific room and it scares the hell out of them because who and what they were is disappearing to themselves and the world seems so unsure and unsecure now But I assure you that to be able to forget that you even exist is an ecstatic place where there are no concerns, no worries. The meditator discovers a state every time he meditates, they find a vast emptiness filled with light that extends everywhere. And then they let go and they're everywhere and nowhere. It makes no sense about saying where I am when I don't know who I am or what I am. And even that question disappears. You're just dumb as a rock. Not a thought in your mind. Just vast space everywhere. And so you're in the invite to heaven that Robert speaks about, Robert Adams and Ramana. your base state of beingness without a thought in your mind, without a worry on your mind. But I'm telling you, there is a higher state. It's when you return from the void and you find love, love like you've never felt before, love for the sake of love, love that is energetic, that totally takes over your life makes you focus on your beloved. And that emptiness that had been you suddenly has a mission, which is to love, be devoted to, 
surrender to your beloved and as that love grows in intensity it destroys you it burns you up there's not a thought in your mind about yourself Whatever you think you are is done and gone. And all that you care about is your beloved. It's like being in a trance or under a spell. Your body doesn't move. It's so quiet, a pin can be heard dropping across the room. And all that's in their mind is the feeling and the picture of the one you love. There's no room for you anymore. All that you feel is love. You have become love itself. Total devotion. Which leads to total surrender. Which means you're not the slightest bit con concerned about your own welfare. Or even if you survive in this love relationship because there's only your beloved. This, as you can see, is not a non-dual teaching. This is a teaching of relationship between you and God, you and your lover, you and your guru you and other people in your life. The beingness that had been empty in you that was oh so silent and so accepting is now filled with the strain of great devotion. Though your body be relaxed, in your mind be thoughtless. Your body is filled with devotion, love, desire to be with your lover, your cat, your tree, your guru, your spouse, your lover. As a matter of fact, even the thought of being with your lover disappears. And that love that is you, that it has a strain, it has a taste, it has a palpability, and it's spread throughout the emptiness that you are. That strain of love, of devotion, fills you everywhere. Every fiber of your being feels the strain of this love. 
how to get there, how to get this, this love so deep that it carries you away, that it empties you out. So there's, there's no room for Angela there anymore, or Michael, or Stevie, or Raju, or Bax. How do you get this place of love so deep and so complete that there's no you anymore? Who the hell even wants this state? This state leads to God realization. This state is felt by very few people. It's very rare. Enlightenment is very rare. Nowadays, in the current field, spirituality, almost everyone is supposed to be enlightened. You're already enlightened, they say. There's nothing to do. It's already there. But almost nobody is there. There's this uh, Neo Advaita, which says there's no separate self. I have no separate self. I am one with the universe. In what direction can I seek, since everywhere is the same, it's me? Well, that's easy to say as words, as a concept. But it takes you absolutely nowhere spiritually. Even the state I experienced with Robert, where I saw that consciousness itself was an illusion and that the states of consciousness came to me like cloud banks, the waking world, sleep, deep sleep, dream state. And I was unmoved and untouched. And thus the term, the unborn, not of this world. What this brings you is peace, peace of the deepest kind, because you realize the world is illusion. It's a show. But there's one more step. One more step, which is to embrace the illusion as real. But not accept the mundane world aspect of the illusion. Angela, tell us about the difference between the mundane world and the world of God as you experienced it or have experienced it. Um, can you tell me what exactly um, you're pointing at that I want, that I, you're asking me to tell? the difference between the mundane world and the world of God in your experience. Um, 
I can say for myself that the mundane world feels contracted. It feels um, robotic. It feels structured. It feels uh, completely unconscious. I'm speaking from knowing the difference. Um, the world of God. Well, I experienced um, different aspects of it. I experienced one moment I experienced the world to be flat like cardboard and everything to be fake and empty, just thoughts, um, clouds. And it felt like the only thing that was real was the love I felt for someone and everything seemed like a play of God, like a dance of God. And I felt like there was nothing to attain anymore. Absolutely nothing. And for the last days, I did not really experience the world of God is that I went completely in it, but I experienced a devotion so deep. Um, it didn't come from Angela, from my human heart. I can cannot even say if it came from love. It came from Shakti, the Shakti energy that comes from Ed, it created in me um, the entity of Shakti. I call it like this because it felt like Shakti is in charge, but it's not me, it's a current inside me. And it made me feel So alive and so ecstatic and so deeply devotional that I could understand really from experience um, what it means to just fall on the floor for your beloved, to, to hold your beloved's legs while he or she walks and you just your body scratches the floor because you cannot let go and when your beloved goes to the toilet you lie down in front of the restroom and from mundane perspective Everything is structured in these um, stories. They always felt so extreme to me. And now, it, actually, it feels like the only thing. Um, worth to be here the only thing worthwhile for existence is to be in that state of ecstatic love <laughs> thank you
What about you, Jay? Tell me the difference between the world you used to live in when you were busy in the media and now. Um, it, it just resonates differently. Um, I go, I go through uh, motions. I, I look at the world. Uh, I comport myself in a different way. Shakti, I listen to Shakti to speak to me. I come here and I feel a love that I've never experienced among everyone in the Sangha. Um, as I said, uh, there's a consternation because of, it seems, a world bereft of love, and yet I, so much love is requited to me. Uh, I was in a world of smoke and mirrors for almost 50 years. Um, I'm still very much a part of the mundane world, but there's a lot less baggage. Uh, again, um, meditating, trying to go deeper, loving you, Edgy, loving my cat. Uh, it's the, the isness of, uh, of God slash capital L-O-V-E, the manifest self, um, the perfection of the permutations that redound to me every moment are just uh, mind blowing. Thank you. Rolf, tell me about how you are now. Um, I feel that I'm guided by Shakti. Um, the, the last month I had the experience that uh, Shakti was a little bit rumbling and had no direction. And uh, now, uh, especially while I'm meditating, it seems that she builds up, especially my hands. And uh, that after a while she starts uh, emanating energy out of my hands, out of my body. How do you feel? Stop that. How do you feel from your heart, your body? What do you feel? I feel uh, something, sometimes almost on a kind of remote control. Uh, Shakti moves my my body and my hands, and I'm uh, just, uh, uh, how should I tell it, uh, guided. It's, it's, she, she uh, I don't know how to, to tell it. It's, uh, uh, I feel blessed. I feel energy. I feel bliss. I feel love. And uh, yes, and uh, I have the impression that Shakti is uh, constantly guiding me and teaching me. So um, it's. What uh, about love? Yes, love. <laughs> it's uh, um, if I put my awareness on love. Uh, everything seems to accelerate. Every the intensity is building more up, and uh, I'm blown away. In a way, I'm. Sometimes it feels like the whole world is disappearing, that uh, only the energy and Shakti ex is ex existing, and uh, she's moving and. Uh, Yes, at the moment I, I don't know exactly what she wants me to do, but I have the impression that she will, I will know. I will know. I, I don't know why the energy is moving in one direction. Sometimes I, I, I direct the energy to someone who I think is neat in, uh, in support, and then 
the energy is building more and more up. Okay. So I I have surrendered and I just do what Chakti tells me, and uh, I I have no I do not question anything. I just go along and uh, yes. Stevie, tell me about love. Be honest, totally honest. It just feels like it's not even of this planet at all. It's, uh, When I first um, came to your classes, your satsang, and uh, when I met Angela, and uh, the love between you guys just totally flooded me so much that all the meditating that I'd done over the last five years, it seemed like I was building like a uh, space inside of me, it just kept expanding and expanding. And I, at a certain point, I literally felt like I was endless or limitless, the, this huge container that I was. And then this love came along and like was bigger than limitless, <laughs> which, is, which was impossible. So just feeling it, my brain just turned to mush because there's no way of grasping it or understanding it or I don't know. It just it just completely exploded my brain. And I've kind of just been weightless, uh stupid, foolish. Do you feel the bliss of love all the time. Very, 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 very often. It's, and what's it's, it like? Oh I'm feeling it right now, just talking about it. It's just Sometimes it feels, right now it feels quite small. It feels maybe the size of my fist. I could say it's in my chest, but I, it's not really. But it, it feels quite small, but as soon as I sink into it, it's bigger than the entire universe. It's bigger than everything. It's, it's fucking, holy shit. It's like the more powerful than the sun. I just get lost in it. And then I just do stuff that I would never, ever have done before. And I don't even think about it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty incredible, really. Feel it now. Feel it deeply. Okay. Let it take you over. just fall into that endless depth of ecstatic love and the desire to disappear. It's not even a desire to disappear. You just disappear in the ecstasy of love, devotion. What is the object of your love? Is there an object?
Seems to be. Uh, Go ahead. Whatever or whoever. brings this feeling to life. Express it. It's, it's you, it's Angela, it's, it's uh, BJ, and Veselina and Mark and, and Michael, K and T and everybody here and all the greatest feelings all the greatest things in the world, all the greatest things, all the worst things in the world. Just everything just seems to just add momentum or mass or, and sometimes it's horrifying because it just feels like it's gonna explode or something or I'm just gonna get lost. That's enough words. Go back into the feeling. Okay. Go back into the feeling. Feel the depths of love and surrender. Feel it like it is a burning sun inside of you, consuming you, consuming the universe, and just stay there. All that I can do, that it's in my power, is to send some Shakti your way. And when you begin to feel Shakti, it awakens love in you. And the awakened love in you brings forth even more Shakti. And then when you swim in Shakti for a while, you realize that the bulk of your existence, your sense of being alive, of being a person, is no longer being in the world. You're no longer in the manifest world that you were in a month or two ago, a year ago. All of your time is spent in utter devotion, not only to Shakti, but to yourself. The life force that you are. You can see when you're in this state by looking within the light of the life force, like an energy being living within you that is your parent, that is your God, that is your beloved. And everyone in the external world is a doorway to meeting that God within. When you don't think much of yourself, it's hard to imagine God living within you. But if there's somebody you love with all your heart, so your mind goes empty, you can feel it in that other person. And you just want to bow down to that person. 
touch her feet, lick her feet, want to have her step on you so you become the dust under her feet. And in that position of utter humbleness, all sins are washed away. All cares are washed away. Everything you've ever done wrong in your life is washed away. And you're perfectly whole. Perfectly self-accepting. Even though there's no self to accept. You just feel complete. You don't want to get off the floor. You want to stay there unmoving. And feel the bliss of total freedom. Freedom through being utterly attached to God, to the life force in yourself. You're so free, there's not a thing you want to do. Your human body no longer dictates what you're going to do. You're in ecstatic tension. But the tension is complete relaxation. But you're in stasis, complete, total, unmoving ecstasy. All you want to do is lie there where you are, listening to the world go on around you and not paying much attention to it at all, but just attending to God within. God within. Complete ecstasy. You feel the life force. You can see the life force as white energy that has boundaries somewhere inside of you. And you also see that white energy all around you in the world and in your body elsewhere. And you know, without doubt, that your embodied spirit, you an avatar, so to speak, an incarnation of God, as are all of us, but so few ever realize it. You are an avatar. You are an incarnation of God, of the life force. And as such, you have enormous power over Shakti once you realize this. And you just want to rest in that power and in that knowing with nothing to do. And you want to stay there for a long, long time, just as Ramana did for 20 or 30 years before he started teaching. He just rests in his own magnificence, the white energy, the total acceptance, the total desirelessness of, of that state to rest as God inside yourself. However, then something happens and you're given a mission. For Romana, it happened very early in his life, age 16, after his awakening, realizing that he was not his body but spirit, he felt impelled to travel to him. Mount Arnachala and to take up permanent residence there and never leave the mountain, which he called God. 
Nobody would understand it if he talked about the life force inside of himself or his beingness that drove him there. So use metaphors. I use a metaphor too, but I think it's truer that there's a life force in you that you can know, you can speak to, you can love, you can have and to hold, to have ecstatically. You don't want to want to move because the bliss is so great. Until finally something comes up and you're forced to move, to participate in the mundane world, whether it's to get a meal, to send children off to school, whatever it is. Your ecstatic state is broken and you return to the mundane world, but not really of it. This is what I want to give you. This is what I teach. How to get there through love of another. Whether it's loving somebody in this sangha, sangha or outside to find a, a godlike beloved in whom you see God, you feel God. And in that connection, it excites the holiness within yourself, the divinity within yourself. No need to move. Dive into the light within. Dive into the self within, the manifest self, not the one that's watching the whole process, which is your primary identity. But you identify with the excitement of the life force dancing and playing and loving. This is what you are incarnated for, not to sit in some cave your entire life, feeling you are the witness and the world is unreal. But finding the real as the manifest God within, Now we'll have some chanting and then we'll do some speaking. <laughs> 